with the cloud. Well, this is uh, the occasional conversation at theofantastique.com. And uh, I'm privileged today to have a conversation partner in Matthew John Paul Tan. And uh, Matthew reached out to me through Facebook and let me know about his great book, uh, Redeeming Flesh, The Way of the Cross with Zombie Jesus. And I'll just uh, read a little bit about uh, Matthew's uh, bio here from the back of the book. Hopefully, I'm going to pr pronounce all this correctly. He is the Felice and Margredel Zakari Lecturer in Theology and Philosophy. How close did I get? Oh, okay. No, it's the Felice and Margredel Zakari Lecturer. Okay, all right. Uh, but well, that's that's that was a lifetime ago. I've, um, oh, I've really? seen some. Oh, yes. I've, okay. My, well, why don't you introduce yourself with changed. a more current bio than what I've got in front of me? Sure, sure. Um, so currently, um, I'm... Uh, I used to be based in Sydney. Uh, that was when I was that uh, in that position. I okay. used to be in the west of Sydney. Um, and in the last couple of years, I moved um, to a rural location to the uh, a rural diocese called the Diocese of Wagga Wagga. And I'm now the academic dean of, um, of a seminary um, out that way called Vianney College. So we train clergy uh, for the Diocese of Wagga Wagga and other rural dioceses besides. Well, nice. Well, thank you for that. that. That's what I get for assuming that the bio on the back of the book was current. So, uh, well, welcome, welcome to Theo Fantastique. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for reaching out and letting me know about your book. It's dated from 2016. Somehow it did not get on my radar, even though the, the subject of zombie Jesus is something that I have interacted with in the past. Mm. I, at Theo Fantastique, I've done a couple of blog posts on there's a, a painting of a zombie supper with uh, the disciples as zombies, you know, literally consuming mm -hmm. Jesus, a very literal, horrific uh, take on, uh, you know, John's gospel and uh, the idea of the Eucharist. And uh, then there was, uh, I think I might have done a story at Religion Dispatches um, looking at the idea of zombie Jesus and what we can lear learn from it in light of, there was a I think it was, uh, it might have been a Catholic priest. Somebody said, we don't, he was denying the bodily resurrection of Christ and said, we don't believe in a zombie Jesus. And I thought that was interesting that you would pick up on that. Mm. And so when I write on these topics and do these reflections, um, uh, it's hard to be taken seriously, but it's good to see somebody like you picking up the baton and running with it. So my first question for you is how did you develop uh, an interest both personally as well as academically and theologically in the whole idea of zombie Jesus. Sure. The, the personal uh, uh, driver for my interest in, in the theme of zombie Jesus was, um, was two, well, no, actually it was two things. Um, the first one was com first coming across the phrase uh, from, um, from the animated series Futurama. Um, I think that was like the first uh, reference that we actually hear of zombie Jesus. Um, it was sort of like an exclamation, um, but no zombies were involved. It was just an exclamation from uh, one of the characters that he's, where he says, sweet zombie Jesus. And uh, <laughs> I think that was pretty much it. Right. Uh, but, and, you know, I kind of, I kind of uh, uh, heard it and went, oh, well, that was random and just sort of left it. And um, what really got me going uh, down the the zombie rabbit hole was walking uh, watching the series The Walking Dead. Um, a you know as as I I became a fan of the series and as I um, started delving deeper into the series, uh, the the more I got the I got a sense that there was you know there were these sort of like religious and theological themes running through the series, and a part of me was just going oh what's what's going on there you know. Uh, but again, you know, um, it, it was not something that was on my uh, research radar at the time until I um, was invited by, believe it or not, um, a seminary to give uh, a retreat for Holy Week, and I thought I, I said yes, and and then I then I asked uh, was asking my friends what should I um, what should I be be uh, giving the thing about, and he said. Well, you had an interest in zombies. Why don't you just give a retreat on that? Now go, yes, yes, I will. <laughs> and so I, um, uh, that became a retreat, a three day, uh, no, is it a three day? Yeah, a three or four day retreat program uh, about the theme of the zombie. That sort of like really drove the, the academic work. I started doing the research into it um, and the uh, 
what what you have in the book is essentially um, my uh, retreat research notes uh, put into a, an academic form. Okay, now that's fascinating. For for uh, viewers who aren't familiar with the background, can you just give a little background other than the the reference in the cartoon? Can you flesh mm. out that? flesh out the idea of zombie <laughs> jesus a little bit more as it's as it is in pop culture sure the um zombie jesus uh in in general started out its life uh well first up as that reference but then it later on became a meme um and the meme essentially was uh you know saying something to the effect of did you know that jesus was the first zombie uh, because he rose from the dead ha 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 um and um I think that was basically where it started uh, taking a life of its own and it started becoming uh, cross-referenced into, uh, you know, other kinds of mediums. Uh, wherever there was a, a zombie reference, zombie Jesus would kind of make it, it would kind of be worked into it in some way, shape or form, uh, particularly in the zombie walks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, it's when you start seeing um, zombie Jesus as a kind of cosplay theme. Um, that that is where you know that's the kind of like the background to to zombie Jesus, um, the um, and you know the the Catholic in me was kind of like looking at that and kind of getting offended, and another part of me was just going, well, if it I mean if it is offensive, why is it so long lasting? There must be something more going on than simple you know than than simple offense. And the more I dug into it, the more I started to realize that there actually, um, there actually is something going on in the interest of Zombie Jesus as a as a theme. Um, and one of the um, one of the I suppose turning points, you know, that that kind of drove me to do the research into the book was, um, you know thinking that there actually could be a way to do some theological jujitsu to kind of say, okay, here's a, here's a meme that actually was designed to offend. Is Can it be turned into something that is fruitful for Christians to actually think about, um, whether it is to think about theologically or to think about sociologically? Um, and that was essentially one of the, uh, the main drivers for the research into the book. If I remember correctly, some of my research into the origins, I think also there were some connections in the uh, online atheist community uh, as a means of kind of satirizing and, and poking mm. fun at the Christian idea of resurrection. But I like that idea of yours of uh, of theological jujitsu, which leads me to my next question. You know, one of the pushbacks I often get in some of my work in horror, horror and theology and so on, is that that, that should be, in their thinking, a no-go area for Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's so uh, full of violence and, and darkness and, and evil, maybe even the demonic and this kind of a thing. Never mind the fact, if you look at the pages of the Bible, it's filled with a lot of pretty violent, you know, uh, stuff too. So I think there might be a, sanitiz a sanitization process that we go mm. through sometimes in our own tradition. And then we assume that oh, the only good things we can interact with must be, you know, reflect goodness and light and something like horror is off limits. You obviously didn't come to that conclusion. So why is uh, why is the zombie and maybe even the broader concept in which it's embedded? Why horror? Why is something like that a positive tool for you to do this theological jujitsu? Mm, I guess the um, the first thing that uh, you know that got me looking into the theme more deeply was the fact that there actually was an established literature um, that looked at the zombie as a kind of um, social critique. Um, you know, uh, I I started doing research and and found out about you know the the George Romero zombie, um, you know, which uh, you know became uh, which was you know made famous in in um, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. And, um, uh, you know, Romero essentially was very intentionally portraying the zombie as a kind of social critique about our, you know, the kind of society in which we live. Um, and where, where I wanted to, you know, sort of like take the critique further was to say, okay, you know, are there, is there any uh, anything, any kind of theological aspect of the critique that we can also bring um, you know, into the uh, into the equation here. You know, and I think what really got me thinking there was watching 
the the Walking Dead again, and um, and and realizing there were these theological themes running through the series, and zombies for whatever reason were the main engine uh, to garner thinking about that. Um, if you look at many, um, if you look at episodes of The Walking Dead, there are reflections about the human condition. There are reflections about moral responsibility and um, uh, aspects of community uh, and what that entails. All of those things were kind of driven by the fact that they are running from zombies. So, you know, that that put in me a quest in my head a question: Is there a theological aspect? to um you know this this interest in the zombie um that the social critique misses because one of the you know one of my my research convictions as a as a, a an academic theologian is that theology is able to provide a vocabulary that is otherwise missing in a lot of um secular academic discourse um and so what i wanted to do with the book was to actually say okay can the 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 vocabulary of the, the of academic theology uh, provide uh, new angles, new light, shed new light on um, uh, the zombie critique of society that the disc, the secular discourses might miss? It's interesting that you've you've mentioned The Walking Dead several times, and I've reflected mm. periodically here at Theo Fantastique on that series. I remember, I don't know how many seasons you saw. I think it might have been first season when uh, the group is looking for a little girl that had run away, gotten lost from the rest mm -hmm. of the group. And uh, as they're trying to find her, they hear uh, bells going off at a church. And keep in mind, this is the zombie apocalypse. So that kind of thing shouldn't be going on. And so they run into the church. I think if memory serves, it was supposed to be a Baptist church. But the thing that struck me is when they get in there, they find it's a recorded church bell. And there is a, a large uh, uh, crucifix in the church. And there's a, a pointed scene where Rick, the lead character, is basically praying out loud to God and looking at and engaging in dialogue with the, this bloody crucifix, this crucified Jesus, trying to find out what's going on. What are we supposed to be doing? So there, there was, there is periodically this this toying with theological ideas that goes mm. goes on. Did you did you happen to see that episode? Any thoughts from a Catholic perspective? It look, I, it, it I probably did, but have you know long since forgotten because right, it has right. been a while since I've last seen the series. Um, I I may not, I don't necessarily recall that episode, but I do right. recall the episodes that involve the pastor. Um, yes. you know, who is this? Herschel, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, who is oh, this no, no, sort no. of? Uh, no, no, no. You I mean the there was the cleric, uh, the African American. Yeah. There, there was the, yes. the farm. Herschel was the farm. That's Herschel. Yep. Yeah, There's Herschel, who, who is this very you know very God. There's a man. lot of theological reflection. A lot of yeah. theological themes running through that. But the other thing that uh, you know that also got me uh, uh, thinking about the the theological aspects of it was were uh, you know was the fact that you had this you had this African American pastor. Who is supposed to, you know, at least ostensibly is supposed to be the epitome um, of, of moral uprightness and fortitude, and yet, you know, is time and time again demonst, uh, you know, proving himself to be the most, the one of the most flawed characters. Um, and um, you also have, um, you know, as one of the one of the earliest uh, characters in the series, um, the name escapes me for the moment. Um, she is this, uh, you know, very, very timid Christian woman um, who later, you know, evolves to become, uh, you know, one of the strong female leads as the series progresses. Her Maybe name escapes me. It's Carol. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, Carol also, you know, has these, ref has these reflections um, with, with, because, you know, of the fact that she, she loses her daughter, right? Um, uh, she has all these reflections about um, why she lost her daughter and things of that nature, and um, uh, even so, so all of these, um, all of these like explicitly Christian characters, um, are at the same time giving their own reflections about why they are going through what they are going through, or in in the case of uh, in the case of our our uh, pastor, um, you know why he's failing to 
live up to the kinds of standards that um, um, that his office is supposed to actually uphold. Um, you know, and and does um, you know what is it about the zombie uh, the zombie apocalypse that is causing us to um, causing us to have these reflections, causing us to fail? Um, you know, when we uh, are supposed to uh, when we are supposed to be living out lives of virtue, why does virtue fail? Can, must virtue fail in the wake of you know um, unstoppable death? Um, there were all these questions that were running through this series, um, which you know gave me a, a which interested me greatly. Um, and then as time went on, I found that you know the the zombie itself. So you know, moving beyond the series, I found that the zombie itself um, was also becoming um, uh, a kind of a kind of stand in, a kind of um, cipher for a whole range of um, cultural processes that you're seeing in postmodern culture um, that are in and of themselves theological in nature. It's just that because what we have is a zombie, the theological aspect of it seems to get lost on a lot of a lot of viewers. And what I wanted to do in the book was to actually bring out those theological dimensions um, that gets missed um, in the the consumption of all things zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one more observation about The Walking Dead, if you would indulge me, but her, her, I have a chapter coming out in a, a forthcoming book on the zombies. It deals with theology, and I, I look at Herschel, and there's mm-hmm. a fascinating line. I think, again, it was in that first season where uh, he's talking to Rick, and he said, uh, you know, the Bible says that there's going to be a resurrection from the dead. I just thought God had a little something different in mind. <laughs> so he, he's it, it, my chapter is about his faith journey, how he's reinterpreting mm. his Christian faith in light of a zombie apocalypse. So mm-hmm. there's just all kinds of stuff there for theological reflection. Yes. And, and w- one of the things I wonder is, and I would like your, your feedback on it and how you touch on this in the book, is many times Christianity, at least in the West, doesn't spend enough time uh, theologically reflecting on embodiedness and the significance mm. of the body and of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And that obviously with the zombie is a huge area. And it's an area where I think a lot of postmoderns are, are thinking of, and maybe that whole zombie walk phenomenon uh, crosses over into that. W- what types of things did you see theologically that the zombie permits us to provide theological reflection on the body? Yeah, well, I guess the um, the the main thing that it um, you know forces us to actually reflect on um, is the fact that you have uh, is that fact that you have this body that is able to, for all you know, in a albeit in a much more reduced form, live uh, beyond death. And I think that you know the fact that from the get go, the zombie basically embodies this. Um, you know, embodies this life beyond death is, you know, a um, uh, a very fertile, um, a very fertile motif for us to actually think about, you know, life beyond death. Um, what what life beyond death is like? It's ju- it just it's just that, um, you know, in the absence of a transcendent horizon, um, the kind of life beyond death that we often see. Uh, not just in the zombie, but even in other manifestations of the undead, um, is this kind of um, living dead, living death, right? So y- y- before the zombie, there was the vampire, um, you know, and and before the vampire, you had the gothic, um, you know, the gothic figures like Frankenstein's monster, um, and even be- even even earlier still, you had Edgar Allan Poe's um, work in um, uh, on the House of Usher, um, the uh, you know there's 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 all these um, there's a long tradition of reflection about uh, bodies, and it just so happens that zombies are the latest one, where we are made to think about what happens to uh, you know to a body once it is dead, um, and in the absence of a transcendent horizon. Um, you know the what seems to come out is that the only kind of the only kind of life that you can kind of expect after death um, is a kind of prolonged semi-death, um, and I think the you know 
the gothic figures have have embodied that in the past but the zombie i think um the zombie i think uh you know it kind of forces us to uh, look at the and consider the body in a very very stark fashion because it, in a way it's also the most human Right. I mean, vampires are, you know, kind of like superhuman, so to speak. Zombies, yes, okay, they have a, a kind of superhuman element in the fact that they are, you know, they are the the the, the living dead. Uh, but on another level, they are also incredibly human. And so they are kind of closer to us uh, than, say, figures like the vampire or Frankenstein's monster. Um, and so because they, uh, you know, they are so close to us, you know, in terms of appearance and in terms of uh, what they were before, uh, they there's a kind of it, it kind of forces us to actually consider um, what you know what our status is like beyond death in a way that other figures just don't do. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to hear you mention some of the classic monster characters in connection mm -hmm. with superheroes. Yep. Um, you know, it's interesting if you think about the universal horror movie cycle, that the characters are each had their own films, but then when the 40s came and they started to be less scary in the face of World War II, they would put all of them together in a monster superhero kind of film. So you have Frankenstein mm. fighting the Wolfman and the vampire makes his appearance. So you do have the superhero kind of element, but you're never going to have a superhero zombie. Uh, no, zombie Avengers isn't going to happen uh, in terms no. of the film. You know, <laughs> so no, that's they, right. they are very yeah, yeah. The closest, the closest thing that you can that you can get to a zombie superhero is, so to speak, is Solomon Grundy. Um, but even that, you know, even then, he is not a you know, he's by no means a hero. Um, the other aspect element that I also wanted to bring out about the body too um, is that, um, especially if you were to look at. good well we had a, a technical glitch there matthew froze up for a bit but uh, we're back here matthew you're making some additional comments about the body yeah sure um yeah so the uh, uh the comment that i wanted to make about the body too is that um the, there was also um up outside of the uh, of the realms of pop culture there was also a um a, a thread in um specifically Marxist literature um, about a particular um, particular theme that um, the the Mark boy Zizek, uh, <clears throat> and the um, he essentially what it was was a a carry over from uh, a carry over from from Freudian psychoanalysis um, that 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 Every living being um, has a desire to um, fulfill uh, his, you know, what he thinks is his destiny to be this sort of like what he calls an infinite creature. Um, there's a kind, so there's a kind of drive to, um, you know, go beyond what uh, biological limits, um, uh, you know, can allow. To, in order to fulfill that desire, and mm -hmm. there's an desire, even, um, so there's a kind of um, uh, you know, it's reason that um, uh, labeled that the death drive, um, and the um, uh, the Marxist philosopher Slavoj Zizek carry you know that over to then look at it in the light of another psycho uh, analyst uh, named Jacques Lacan. So idea about um, this idea about going beyond biological limit, this urge or drive to go beyond biological limit, uh, to do so even if it kills us, um, was something that fascinated me. Um, when I started watching, you know, zombie shows and movies, um, a part of me just goes, "Hang on, there's actually something about the death drive um, in the zombie." And uh, you know, and I'm you know being the nerd that I was, and I said I must I must investigate this further. Um, and so that also was another uh, motivation for for writing the book. That it also was a um, 
uh, a kind of look into the into the 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 death drive, but to also look at the death drive in the wake of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because one of the interesting things about Slavoj Žižek is that um, he is a Marxist that takes Jesus seriously. Um, and and sort of me was also thinking something about um, uh, Žižek's Christ that also at the same time informs this um, notion of the death drive. Now, um, uh, I then, you know, part of the book goes into... Um, Zizek's notion of of who Jesus is for him, um, and I tried to sort of like out um, those threads in the of the theory of the death drive, and so I basically so, um, the zombie embodies this kind of drive. I uh, you know it says there is action of this death drive, and it's the zombie. Then I also wanted to say, really something baked into the culture live in that is also in a way pivoting us towards this death drive. Um, there is something in postmodern culture that wants us to live out the life of the infinite creature, um, even though our biological limits may not allow us to do that. Um, and, and so it just became this investing out of uh, postmodern culture actually does in doing two things at once, right? The first one is um, uh, motivating us or, you know, a little, causing us to fall in, into the law of being more than what our bodies can actually do, right? Uh, you know, being this sort of store of infinite potential and at the same time uh, making us realize that our the fact that embodiedness means that we are actually not able to carry this potential. Um, so it also became a reflection about how postmodern culture is do you know is um, is, is necrophobic, right? In the sense that it wants us, it, it, it it's basically a culture that, uh, contrary to popular belief, is actually very very theological, right? Because it is us to um you know it's wanting us to become uh, in a way natural beings right uh, by and and doing so through consumption right being more than what our bodies can deliver through acts of consumption and then at the same time um uh postmodern culture also in a way folds in upon itself because um you know it, it in a way it knows that the it's um uh you know that our finitude our limit uh limited nature is such that we actually cannot bear the kind of infinity that postmodern culture is is wanting us to pursue and so as it is being necrophobic it has to live forever wanting us to um live out this death drive by being it is also in the sense it's also kind of um it kind of pivots us, it kind of preloads us to expect the outcome. And the zombie, you know, for um, you know, for for all of our protestations about you know othering the zombie, um something that is close to us because the zombie very uncomfortably embodies the end point of postmodern culture. I, I hope that makes sense. It was yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely. Uh, your, your connection is a little uh, iffy, so I want to Meduse take my, my last two questions and I'll combine them into one question for you here um, to make mm -hmm. sure we, we can get this uh, taken care of here. Um, it, you've talked about a lot of areas for theological reflection, but I can hear the Christian skeptic out there. How are you connecting the dots between zombie Jesus and the New Testament and Christian reflection on the idea of resurrection is one question. And then related to that, did you have, do you have any specific Catholic reflections that you include in the book? Yeah, no, that's a good, that, that, that's a very good question. The, um, the, let's start with the more, um, the more general, you know, Christian, uh, mm -hmm. 
more general Christian insights. Um, one of the things that I think the um, you know book brings out that the non-Catholic can appreciate um, is the fact that the life of Jesus Christ, um, you know, the life of, and I, and I and I deliberately you make use of the motif. Um, the life of Christ um, um, is, is whereby uh, he um, how, how shall I um, he saves whereby he saves by being in what is known you know what we call a, a, an exchange of flesh that is in the biblical uh, uh, right we see this for instance uh, when Jesus cures um, the leper. And you know when the the leper is cured and has uh, you know starts telling everybody about um, his Jesus, then has to live the life of the leper, avoiding all the uh, all the uh, the major tasks, you know, like a leper. So there's a kind of exchange of flesh going on, you know, in the the course of Jesus's healing ministry, treatments of the book. Uh, and that, you know, my argument is that the scriptural witness bears this out. Um, for a more Catholic audience, the um, the, um, the the zombie in a way gives us a a, a view about uh, you know about Christology, right? In the sense, um, you know, it it gives us a sense. Christ's body actually does in the course of his saving ministry. The body is not, um, you know, it's not something that is incidental to his saving ministry. It's actually essential. Um, and at the same, what it also, uh, you know, what the zombie also brings out is our reflections of uh, ecclesiology. What does it mean to be a member of? Because what humans in the book is that the zombie actually does embody a kind of ecclesiology, a kind of around consumption. Um, that Jesus kind of inverts that ecclesiology of the zombie. Means that the zombie uh, actually, well, whilst the zombie actually um, lives out that you know quote unquote ecclesiology. Um, being a consume all-consuming mass, right? That takes things, you know, takes life, right? And 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 basically spreads death. Um, Jesus actually counters that because what the kind of um, ecclesiology that Jesus um, embodies is an ecclesiology that freely gives himself over, and in the course of giving his body over to the other, handing over that body, he gives life to the other. Um, and so it is a it's a kind of inversion going on um uh in the um you know in Jesus Christ uh, that in a way inverts uh the logic of the zone. Yeah, well that's all fascinating stuff there. And here for folks, uh pick up a copy of Redeeming Flesh by Matthew John Paul Tan. And uh I'm going to ask you to shoot me a copy of your updated bio that I can include in the program notes so that I can introduce you properly. And I'll include a link uh, to this book. And if you've got a link to your, your contact information or what have you, if folks have uh, further questions, I'd love to help promote this. That would be great. Oh, thank you so much for that. That's very kind. Yeah, well, it, it's been great. I, I want to thank you uh, for reaching out and uh, making uh, making me aware of this particular book. And are you going to, have you continued this kind of reflection or was this like a one-time thing for you? Okay. Um, what was your question? Uh, have you continued this kind of reflection or is this like, uh, was this just a one-time research project for you? Uh, I mean, there are, there are uh, very, on, I am working on another book project about uh, probably they're probably oh sorry there you are That's okay. um uh so there probably are going to be um aspects of the um 
you know, reflections on the zombie in that. Um, but a lot of my, my merch um, with in the last few couple of years has been around the theme of the internet. So, um, an artifact of pop culture. Okay. Well, again, I think technology is failing us, Matthew, but uh, thank you so much for coming on. I want to uh, thank you again, and hopefully folks will seek out your book. No, this is, no, th I, uh, I, I'm sorry that the, the technology seems to be, um, 